All right, you should be good to go. Cool, thanks, man. Uh, welcome back to any, another uh, VC Libraries video code review. Um, today we'll be looking at pull request uh, 2029 from our contributor, Misko, um, implementing the CS Plus 23 uh, feature uh, P0448R4 span stream. Um, so for this review, I thought we would do something a little bit different this time. Um, instead of jumping right into the code, uh, I think it would be um, cool to actually look at uh, the paper um, and see how do we read a standard proposal uh, to even find out uh, what it's doing because it's written in a very um, specific style. Um, and if you've uh, never read such a, a paper before, um, especially in the context of um, trying to understand the corresponding code, um, it can seem uh, very intimidating. Um, so uh, thanks Mia for suggesting that. I think that this will be a, a cool, uh, hopefully hour-ish of looking at papers. Um, so uh, a little bit of background here. Here's the PR on our repo. Um, Misco has linked the issue that it uh, solves or fixes. Um, we file a tracking issue. Uh, this is just our repo convention. We get one, we make one tracking issue for each accepted proposal um, whenever a standards meeting adjourns. Um, so in this case, the paper is a P, it's got this number. Um, and the way that uh, ISO works is this is a, uh, official slash unofficial number. Um, the first four digits after the the P. This is the paper number. Um, so span stream will have a different number than something like the um, uh, basic string uh, uh, prohibiting basic string from null putter paper um, or the CS plus seventeen optional paper. Those all have different numbers. Um, so we can just uniquely refer to a given proposal um, by that number. Um, and every time it's revised, um, the R number increments. It starts at R0, that's the 0th revision, the very first one, um, and then uh, goes up from there. So R4 would be the fifth revision of this paper, and that was the one that was ultimately accepted um, into the standard. So the Microsoft STL issue will often record any other information, like here we've got a specific feature test macro um, or other things we need to know about. In this case, it's um, just the macro. Um, so to get at that paper, um, you can go to the committee's website. Um, here is the link. Um, but a very fast, convenient way is to use the WG21.link redirector uh, maintained by, uh, I believe it's uh, uh, Mira Boss. Um, this is a very cool uh, website um, at hpswg21.link. Um, and if you just go to the root, it shows all the different um, forms that it uh, supports. This is extraordinarily useful whenever you're working on anything relating to standardization. Um, so if you just um, say wg21.link slash and then put the paper number and the revision number, it will find the paper on the committee's website, which can be a little hard to navigate and uh, get that for you. Um, or if it's available on isocpp.org, it will give you that link. Um, if you don't know the revision number and you just want to get the latest um, public version, you can just omit that R uh, followed by a number and just P0448 would give you the latest version of the span stream paper. Um, this can also be used to find um, the actual standard. In this case, the latest version is N4892. Um, sometimes the redirector is uh, not uh, totally updated, especially when a paper has just been published, but the uh, Microsoft STL repo um, has a link to the very latest um, CS plus 23 uh, working draft. So um, if you're a, a little bit new to um, uh, reading standard proposals, it's, it's important to remember that anybody can write a proposal and get it published on openstood.org. Um, these are not necessarily accepted, um, especially like early revisions. Um, so just because a proposal exists does not mean that it's an actual feature. Um, only ones that have been officially accepted by the uh, CS Plus Standardization Committee, WG21s, um, at the plenary meeting um, will then get applied to the working draft uh, the next time that it's published. In this case, uh, we know from the committee meeting that this specific version was accepted and applied. Um, so the paper is depicted as a diff, a patch, to an earlier version of the working draft um, that will then be integrated into the sources for the working draft. Um, when that happens, that's done through the skilled editors um, and they can um, sometimes rearrange stuff or change stable names, um, sometimes fix things that are just very obviously broken. Um, any substantial fixes would need to be approved by the, um, the full committee. Um, and importantly, after a paper has been merged into the working draft, 
it can accumulate further changes, whether by other features, editorial changes, um, or library working group or core working group um, issue resolutions that are basically bug fixes against the standard. Um, so whenever we implement a feature, um, we try to be careful, um, especially if the feature has been out for a while, um, to look at it in the working draft itself to pick up the latest changes, but the original proposal is still a very useful guide to see uh, what changed, what should we even be looking at? Um, so we're just going to be looking at the proposal here, but keeping in mind that we really need to be looking at the working draft. I can even find it. Um, uh, opening up an actual Adobe Reader can be faster, but uh, in this case, just browsing is usually pretty fast. So here we can see that the new header has already been integrated into the list of library headers. Uh, we got the feature test macro with the final value and then the various declarations. So this has all been integrated in. There's no trace of um the fact that this is relatively new um but most of the wording is collected in this um span dot streams um so we can actually we can actually just read this in addition to the proposed wording i'll leave i'll leave the tab open here this is often formatted a little bit nicer than the um uh, original proposal because this is uh law tech and all that okay so um I have a, I, I, let's say I have a bad habit of uh, looking at a paper and just jumping immediately to the proposed wording. Uh, this comes from when I would sit in the library working group and be reviewing wording. At that point, it's already been through the library evolution working group um, that determines, do we even want this feature? How should it integrate with the rest of the library? How should it be designed? Um, and by the time it gets to the non-evolution library working group, um, the focus is on, okay, is this wording precise enough to actually be implemented? Because Papers are trying to do something interesting. They're trying to specify a library without actually providing um, much of any code. Um, so just by specifying it, it needs to expand to the necessary code for an implementation. That's a, a special art that um, can be uh, tricky uh, to get right. Um, so often I would just jump to the proposed wording and just uh, think about, OK, you know, does this make any sense whatsoever without really caring about the design? Uh, but if you really want to understand what a feature is doing, you need to read the um, the history and the rationale. And that's what um, this paper starts with. Um, oftentimes, these papers would wind their way through the committee. Later revisions would um, tend to drop the history and rationale. Um, I believe the committee is starting to move away from that because retaining um, that in successive revisions is useful. Um, and that's the case here. Um, so this is a very nice paper um, from Peter Summerlad, um, uh, who I, I've had the pleasure of meeting at several uh, committee meetings, and he's got many other features um, into the standard itself. Um, I think he also worked on, I want to say user-defined literals, uh, might have been the first thing um, that I remember of uh, his that we implemented, but uh, he's, he's got a lot more. Um, okay, so let's start reading this. Um, also, I am, even though I've worked on this library for over a decade, I'm always a novice when it comes to IO streams. They've never really, really fundamentally made sense to me. Um, so I'm going to be uh, trying to understand exactly how this integrates with everything else. I do understand span. That's good news because uh, we recently merged that. Misko um, implemented that as his um, first PR. Um, so that's why he's jumping on, on the span stream here. Um, so this is an interesting combination of very old tech of you know 1998 era IO streams and very new CS plus 20 um, spans. Um, I believe earlier revisions of this paper even promised um, a long awaited dream that perhaps this could be able, once this is accepted, um, we can finally remove the ancient stir streams, which were born deprecated in CS plus 98. Um, I don't think that that's happening here. Um, I think there's like one more extra paper that's needed. Um, but we're getting we're getting hopefully close. I would love to be able to get rid of that ancient um, uh, quasi standard um, technology. It's technically standard, but it's deprecated. OK, so I'm going to read through this real quickly. And then when we get to the design, I'll probably start um, skimming it a little bit faster. But I want to read the history here. Um, Stream has been the oldest part of the super standard library and especially stir streams. So that's that deprecated tech that I was talking about. Um, their trick is that rather than holding uh, stood string internally, they can use a separately pre-allocated buffer, which is fast, but the way stir streams did it was just really horrible. Um, so P407 and P408 provide the efficient access to the underlying buffer. So here these are not hyperlinks, but using our uh, newly learned WG21 link technology, um, we can ask, hey, what is P0407? Um, and this will find the latest revision, which is typically, if it's an accepted paper, Almost always it'll be the one voted in. There's like one or two cases where a paper is voted in and then the author revised it anyways, which 
really they shouldn't do. Um, and that revision was not necessarily accepted. Um, so do be aware of that. Um, so allocator aware um, basic string buff uh, was 407. And then let's look at 408. Oh, I'm not quite to the point where I've memorized literally every um, paper number. Um, I do recognize some like PO355 is chrono. Um, 645 is format. Uh, efficient access to basic string buffs buffer. OK, and this is one that we um, previously merged. Um, so let's go back and post this. Let's go look at the paper here. OK, so efficient access to the underlying buffer for string streams, and that solves half the problem. Um, the other half is using a fixed size pre-allocated buffer, for example, allocated on the stamp. OK, so the stir stream, the deprecated tech, was trying to use an externally fixed and an internally growing buffer. And uh, Peter Summerlad believes that's a doomed approach and very hard to use right. And I agree from my very limited knowledge of stir streams. It had this whole freeze thing that I don't really understand. Um, there is an old paper. Um, this, is, this uses the committee's older uh, form N2065. Um, these numbers, these N prefix numbers, a little bit of history, used to be used for all proposals. Um, but then the committee switched to the new um, P number followed by revision. Um, the only time you see these N numbers now are for the real official papers like the um, working drafts, which is a nice way to just recognize at a glance. Oh, N something something. That must be a working draft or an editor's um, list of editors changes or something like that rather than a, a random proposal. Um, so with SPAN, we have a library type representing such buffers, um, in particular non-owning views um, that we can use for specifying and implementing such streams. They can be used in areas where dynamic reallocation of string streams. This is the classic CS plus 03 tech that will expand as necessary, but is higher overhead. Um, but the burden of carrying for a pre existing buffer during the lifetime of streams is manageable. OK. So that's what this is trying to solve. It's going to be like stir stream, but better. Um, so here, this has an internal diff of the various revisions. I'm going to skip over this because this is just how the paper was revised. Um, we're just looking at the entire thing. Okay, well. OK, the paper proposes a class template basic span buff. Um, this is going to be similar to basic string buff and basic file buff. Um, and these are parts of IO streams that control um, where characters are stored. Here's where my IO streams knowledge is incomplete. I have never understood all of the all of the different layers, although I've if I you know see oh basic string buff, I kind of know what it does, just not enough to write it without you know looking at the standard extensively um uh, these all implement the um basic stream buff uh interface um so it's customizable and i guess it's kind of nice that we're able um like 25 years later to go customize it with a type that was not even envisioned back in 1998 um but wow there's a lot of complexity that we we pay for that customization um OK, and the corresponding stream class templates, um, that's going to be the uh, I, uh, I span buff, O span buff and all that, or sorry, I span stream, O span stream, just like I stream stream and um, F stream. Uh, OK, no ownership or reallocation support is given for those you have string based streams. OK, so this is not trying to solve literally everything. Um, it's trying to be very focused on um, what it does. OK. Um, so a little bit of the motivation. OK, so this is going to ah, show some usage. OK, so you can start with. Uh, an array of characters. This is an array of three, six, nine total characters, um, eight, not including the null terminator. Um, we can make a, a span saying, hey, I'm a non owning view over the uh, nine characters in this buffer. Um, and then if we read from that buffer on the stack, we can parse it um, and say, oh, here's a 10, here's a 20, here's a 30, and so forth, and we're not allocating anything. Um, whereas if you try to do this with a string stream, um, I believe what it will do is it will copy the provided string into its internal buffer and then parse it. And then copies pointless if you've already got the buffer on the stack. So this is this is cool. I, I understand this part. I like this. For writing. Um, here he's got an output array on the stack, makes a span of modifiable care um, from output, um, just stream some integers into it, um, and we should expect to see six characters um, scribbled into the span. 
um, followed by the null terminators that were filled. So this is only scribbling, if I understand this correctly, 10, 20, 30, or the characters 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, not scribbling anything else, but the, this array was filled with null characters to begin with. So that's why, um, uh, let's see, we can ask, oh, I see, um, the OSPAN string actually knows, I see, the OSPAN string knows how many characters were written. So it actually doesn't matter here that the rest were nulls. It's not using that null termination. The span, the OSPAN string knows that exactly six characters were scribbled in. And then if we get that OSPAN stream span dot data dot size, again, no null termination needed. We see these characters in here. Here he's making a temporary stood string just to do the comparison. Um, this could have been written um, in the test as making a um, string view and comparing because string view doesn't need null termination either. Um, and then here he's verifying that output, which is the original array is equal to the span's data. So the this is verifying that the O span string directly scribbled into output. There's no copying. Um, and then here is where the um, those null terminators that were originally scribbled in are used. You can just look at the buffer directly and you'll see the 10, 20, 30 scribbled in and the rest is unchanged. So the span stream is not emitting any nulls itself. It's um, the array already had them. OK, so both of these examples make sense. Like I know how to use the span stream after reading this. Um, I still don't understand any of the span buff stuff um, or the stream buff stuff, but um, the top level usage makes sense, just like I can use a string stream um, without really knowing how all of the um, magic slash danger inside works. Uh, OK, impact on the standard. This is a little section that just says uh, what we got to change. Um, this doesn't need any like core language functionality. Um, this says it enables deletion of the deprecated stir string classes and would remove them, assuming P407 is also included. I know 408 was. That's the efficient access. I believe 407 is not yet accepted. I think this is still winding its way through library evolution. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Um, so that's why, or sorry, that's why the deprecated stir stream, unfortunately, um, still exists. But um, come on, I want content. Or not? OK, I don't know why I can't open the contents here. Oh, the, the tab is not responding. There we go. Um, <clears throat> these are hiding in our favorite annex, Annex D, for deprecation. Um, did I skip over it? Here we go, D14. So the ancient stir streams are still standard but deprecated, but hopefully soon they can be removed. Um, this is amazing. I never thought this would happen or that we would get close to this. Um, so thank you, Peter, for working on these features. Um, OK, so design decisions. Let's uh, read about this before getting to the boarding. Um, the design follows from the principles of the IO stream library. Um, if discussed um, person, oh, this is talking about um, what, uh, how do we actually get this reviewed and understood by the library working group itself? Because I would say among the implementers and others that attend that, um, their knowledge of IO streams tends to be roughly comparable to mine, which is not exhaustive, although there are definitely some people who are much more expert than I am um, at IO streams there. Um, so it's saying if discussed, meaning at the library working group and library evolution working group meetings, a person knowledgeable about IO streams implementation is favorable um, because of its many legacy design decisions that would no longer be taken by modern CS class designers. And the behavior presented is part of what frozen stir streams provide. OK, so that's that fr uh, freezing stuff I was talking about. Name really relying on a pre-allocated buffer. So that part I understand, that's the span. Without the idiosyncrasy of Oster stream, that automatically reallocates a new buffer on the C, C heap um, when the original buffer is insufficient, which happens when a buffer is not explicitly marked as frozen. Oh, OK, so this is kind of educating me about the old stir stream stuff. It's when you're not frozen, the thing starts to be flexible length and says, oh, I can reallocate, kind of like a, a modern string stream would. Um, that part just never made any sense to me. Um, now we have different types. This is good. It's encoding the choice to use either a fixed stack buffer or an internal flexible buffer um, in the type system rather than some runtime mode of freezing. Um, yeah, the use with pre allocated buffers is why it hadn't been eliminated because some, some people said, oh, but what about performance? Um, and 
addressing the performance current concern is what will allow us to get rid of this deprecated tech that I've never actually really seen people use in production. Um, I can I have, I have some sense of what people use mostly because when people use stuff, they file bugs about it. And I have not seen bugs filed about stir stream in an extremely long time. I'm trying to remember if I've ever seen one filed. I want to say no. Um, I don't think so. So there seems to be very, very little usage. Um, whereas hopefully the spam stream will see more usage because it's simpler to understand and more modern. OK, as with all existing stream classes, using a stream object or a stream buff object for multiple threads can result in a data race. Only the predefined global stream objects are exempt from this. OK, so that makes sense. There is a, um, if you are unfamiliar, there is a section in the standard whose stable name I actually have memorized called res on data races. Um, if you search for this, once your PDF reader finds it, um, it will show. Here we go. Nope, this is not where I want to be. Come on. OK, this is the number 164610. There we go. Data race avoidance. Um, this is the section of the um, standard library, which is under the um, the global wording for uh, how the library behaves. That's clause 16 um, about multi-threading. Yeah, here we can see the sections to navigate 164610, library wide requirements. For some sections, I know how to navigate to them from the top level. For res on data races, I remember the stable name. Um, for six conforming implementations. 10 data race avoidance. That's how to find this. Um, so this talks about um, what does it mean to be multi-threading safe? Um, what can you do safely with standard library objects? What is forbidden? Um, what does the implementation need to do in order to uphold these guarantees, which I think of or refer to as the usual thread safety guarantees? Um, and this has um, a little bit of wording that says unless otherwise specified and then the rest of the library when it wants to can provide stronger guarantees um, as the um, the standard um, IO streams objects do. Um, separately, there's something um, that allows you to write to an IO stream um, while being multi-threading safe. Um, that is the um, uh, the sync stream uh, that we uh, merged an implementation of uh, fairly recently. Um, I think I, I want to credit that also to Peter. Um, uh, for design, uh, I think I think that was his feature. I could be completely wrong. Um, I could I could look it up. Actually, why don't we why don't we do that real quick? This will respond. Do not. Okay, never mind. Um, Let's uh, go back to the paper. OK, um, OK, so design issues. Um, these were issues to be discussed by the library evolution and library working groups. Um, these have all been resolved by the time that this paper was um, uh, voted in. I'll quickly skim through these just to see what was thought of during the paper, but I'm not going to go too much into detail. Um, uh, because these were just questions that have been resolved. Um, should arbitrary types as template arguments to span be allowed? Um, about the characters. Um, should the basic span buff be copyable? Um, hold on, let me. I think I've got outgoing video that I need to turn off. This is starting to not respond. Come on. This one, yes. OK, hopefully this will start responding a little better. Um, should the basic span buff be copyable? Um, it doesn't own any resources because it's just pointing to an external buffer. Um, but the other classes that do own their buffer prohibit copying. Um, OK, and he decided to not allow basic span buff to be copied to be consistent with the other ones. Um, other open issues that were resolved. Um, it's in a separate header. Um, there is a default constructor. And then at uh, the Kona in Hawaii 2019 meeting, it was forwarded to library working group for CS20. OK, and then future directions. Um, 
how it can be modified in the future in the 2021 February meeting. Changes were applied to section seven of the paper revision. Okay. Okay, so this has actually been applied to the latest version. Okay, let's scroll down. Come on. Okay, wait, are we to the wording yet? No, this is just the diff. Oh, wait, are we actually in the wording? Oh, here we go. Okay. Okay, so this is what I was looking for. Um, this will often be in a proposal under technical specifications or formal wording or something like that. This is the part that actually will be applied when it's voted in um, to the working draft. And this includes instructions in italics here for the editors um, to uh, translate into LaTeX and then uh, check into the, the repo um, for the working draft. I guess I can show you that too. Um, so if you want to know how the um, working draft is actually created, um, if you go to, if you search for GitHub C++ um, draft, um, this was, I think, the first part of the committee's work that moved to GitHub, which is awesome. Um, and come on. Okay. Um, the LaTeX sources um, for the draft are all in this repo. Um, editorial issues can be submitted um, to this repo and resolved um, quickly, including with um, pull requests. Um, however, if you have any substantial issues, meaning issues that affect the normative wording, um, those cannot be submitted as issues to this repo. You have to file a core working group or a library working group um, issue. Um, okay, a little too ambitious loading this repo, but I promise this is the repo where the sources live. Um, and there's a re relatively huge LaTeX files um, for each clause of the standard. And if you want to know, um, some standard archaeology about when did this wording, here we go, when did this wording appear? Um, looking at history or get blame um, in the source um, is one way to find it. Um, the only other fast way I know, or <laughs> kind of fast, is to store literally every version of the standard that's ever been published, do a binary search until you find the section that changed, and then look at the editor's notes and try to backtrack which paper um, generated that diff. Um, but just being able to look in this repo um, is useful. Um, OK, this is actually how I got started. I believe filing issues on GitHub. Um, it was just so approachable and nice. So thank you, everyone who made this <laughs> excuse me, possible. OK, um, so let's go back here to the wording. Um, I'm going to scroll through until we get to the um, part that actually adds the um, the new uh, standard ease, and then we can actually look at it in place in the working draft. But I want to see where all the wording edits were added. So we've got a new header in uh, what we think of as the table of doom um, that lists literally every standard header. <laughs> it's relatively um, doom worthy um, because, uh, as I understand it, uh, getting that table to look right in the LaTeX sources for the draft is just an absolute nightmare. Um, it might have improved a little, but it used to be really obnoxious to add anything to that table. Um, then we get a feature test macro indicating the presence of the feature. Um, the proposal says to be determined for the value because this is always set to the month that the edits are or that the paper is actually approved. In this case, I believe it happened to be June of 2021. So that's why it's going to be 202106. Um, yep, that's right. When I initially created this issue, the had not been quite finalized. So the original version um, said to be determined, but later, once the actual future test macro value came out, we updated this. Um, OK, so we got the new we got the new header added. Um, we've got. The new feature test macro edit added. Oh, and I just remembered um, new headers being added is something we have not done in a while. Um, in particular, there's something that needs to happen um, whenever a new file is added to the repo um, in our wiki. Uh, we have um, a page for this. This is what I think of as our hack these files list because that's what we called it internally, but now it's named differently. It's, um, or is it files to edit when adding or removing files? It's a checklist. Because um, whenever you add a header or source file to the STL, there's a bunch of other stuff that needs to change accordingly. Um, this lists all the different places in the GitHub repo um, that need to change. Um, and it depends on, are you adding a header? 
Are you adding a source file? If it's a header, is it intended to be included by users? Um, is it just internal, like X utility? Um, is it a public standard header, like uh, this span stream is? Um, we need to add coverage to various tests and so forth. Um, we've got internal repository stuff because um, we're still migrating um, everything over to GitHub. And plus, some stuff will always be internal, like the VS installer, because uh, we live as part of the larger um, product. Um, and most importantly, um, for this thing, um, when we add an extensionless header, um, the committee was so clever slash cute in the 90s when they were trying to decide, hey, what header should we give to CS plus standard library stuff? Should it be, or what extension? Should it be .h, .hup? And somebody had the brilliant compromise of let's just remove the extension altogether. What could possibly go wrong? Um, and that does give them a very distinctive look. The problem is that our IDE relies on the extension in order to understand, hey, um, what files are actually, you know, CS plus or plain text or whatever. Um, so there are uh, currently two files that we need to modify whenever we add extensionless headers to the product. We didn't have to worry about this for a while um, when working on CS plus 20 because the headers that were being added to CS plus 20 were all finalized fairly early on, like I think a, a year or two before the standard finished. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was the case. And when we went to update the IDE, we just added all the known headers um, like span and um, I'm forgetting the uh, source location, all that stuff we just shipped and now I've cleaned out of my brain. Um, all those new headers were listed in this, so we didn't need to constantly teach the IDE when merging new PRs. But now, since we're working on um, CS plus 23, um, we need to update these files again for the headers that have been added so far to CS plus 23. And we can certainly do it in batches, like we can add all the currently added headers if there's ones addition, uh, in addition to span stream, so we don't have it updated frequently, but we're certainly going to have an update this one. Um, so that's going to be something to look out for. Um, I can add a note to self. There's nothing to be changed in the PR proper uh, on GitHub because this is all internal. It's actually not even in the MSVC internal repo. This is in the VS repo that we um, interact with very rarely um, as MSVC library maintainers. Uh, but I can include a note to self here. Um, May as well comment here because this is where the new thing is being added. Um, note to self, no change requested for this GitHub PR. Uh, we'll need to follow, let's get this thing, the Checklist for adding a new header um, notably um, uh, teaching the VS IDE about CS plus 23's extensionless headers that have been added so far. It's note to self because the person who mirrors this to the MS internal repo will need to take care of this. Uh, we can actually do the VS edit asynchronously. We can just teach it about span stream even before the header ships, which is how we were able to add source location and all the others um, to the IDE's list even before those headers physically ship. Because it's okay to tell the IDE, hey, if you see a file named source location or span stream, it's going to be CS plus even if that header doesn't physically exist. Um, it's one of the, um, the few times that we don't need to do things atomically. Uh, note self, no change request for this GitHub PR. We'll need to follow the checklist for adding a new header, notably teaching the VSID about CS plus 23's extensionless headers have been added so far. Okay. Note self created. Okay, so goodbye checklist. Um, goodbye. Oh, yeah, I was going to look for, hey, since this finally responded, um, what was it? Um, sync stream? I know it's not open. Aha, OK, it was um, Peter Summerled and co-authors. OK, so I was uh, right in part. Excellent. Um, OK, going back to span stream. Um, so we get the new header. Got my reminder to update the VSIDE. We got the feature to macro. Um, 
which we'll need to uh, look for in the PR. Uh, we can actually do that right now. Um, so let's alt click. OK, so in Wavis score, this is where we list um, the has CX623 macro. It controls PO448R4. That is the correct paper number. But we had recorded the issue with the angle brackets. This is just our convention. I'm very nitpicky here because it adds a whole header, um, not just a type. Um, so I will suggest that. I don't want that. 1970. Um, to follow number 1970s um, title. It's actually a cleaned up title. Exactly. 448R4. Yep, that's right. Angle bracket span stream. Okay. Other thing I check is that it's in sorted order. Yes, this is a very low numbered paper. Um, then we get the feature test macro in the CXX 23 section, also in sorted order. Uh, it's got the correct standard value 202106L. I'm paranoid, so let's double check. Yeah, that's right. I rely on control F searching and highlighting to detect digit transpositions and stuff like that. Um, so that's all good. Okay. Um, feature test macro paper being mentioned. Uh, feature test macro test, which is here. This is my mental checklist. Of, well, what do we got to change? Um, so we get all the mentions of the new macro. These are all identical. I can just visually see that. Guarded by underscore or if underscore has six six twenty three. Yep. In this um, test, we conventionally don't bother with preprocessor comments. The one place we don't um because it would just be so messy um all these values are the ones i just looked for yep and it is should be an overall sorted order after span span stream and then s size yep that's good okay so that's good okay we got feature test macro down hooray um looks like we got some new tests being added and then the actual product code we got the rest of the hack these files changes. Uh, we can go ahead and validate those two. Uh, I shouldn't close that wiki. I've already got the reminder to look at the VS internal or the MSVC internal stuff too. Um, and so it prevents us from doing things that otherwise would be silently accepted by our peer system, like adding a new file and forgetting to add it to the installer. So when our users try to actually install VS, they're like, wait, you promised a span stream. Where is it? And you would say, oh, wait, we forgot it in setup. Um, we have, it's been a very long time since we've forgotten setup because we maintain checklists. Um, this is very useful because this stuff also changes from time to time. Um, so edits in this GitHub repo, we're adding a new header. So it should be mentioned in CMake list. That's where I saw this thing um, that is added. It's in sorted order. There's only the one file. There's no separately compiled stuff here. So that's awesome. Um, so that looks good. Uh, next up, no sources here. Sources meaning separately compiled stuff. There is a public header, so we should be seeing MSVC all public headers for our test stuff. Um, it is here. This is now divided into core and non-core sections. So we need to be careful that we get this in the right section. This does look correct. Yeah, string is definitely non-core, so so is span stream. Yep, sorted order. That's good. Should only be mentioned in one place. Um, what's next? Uh, header units JSON. This is indeed a header, so it should be mentioned in the list of headers to be translated. Uh, yep, it's here. This is great. So Misco knows to follow this checklist, which is awesome. Um, span followed by span stream, sorted order. That's good. Uh, include each header alone matrix. This is our test that verifies, yeah, you can include a header just by itself, and it doesn't assume that we've dragged in other stuff. Um, someday modules will make this moot, but not today because um, we're still using classic headers. So include each header alone matrix list in the tests. Um, that is not mentioned here. That is missing. OK, we got a bug. Uh, let's get this path copied. Uh, 
And I'm trying to think where's like a good place to mention it. Probably just test thought list. It's not really adding a new test. Um, what I want to do is add a free floating comment um, to the um, I should set or mentioned it in CMake list, which I could. Nah, I've already mentioned something there. Um, yeah, I'll just I'll just add another comment here that way. They're all tagged in the same line because I know this one's not going to change, so it's not going to get outdated or anything. Um, uh, we uh, say uh, needs to be updated for this new header I'll also link to the checklist this is contained according to the checklist actually maybe I, maybe i could comment on just line zero or an empty line of the new header um why don't i do that instead of putting this in the cmake list I'll leave this existing comment though. Um, okay, new header. Um, yeah, this one's fine. Maybe an empty line. That way it's not showing anything wrong. There we go. Okay, test to test include each header only matrix list needs to be updated for this new header according to the checklist. Yes, correct linked. Okay. This has saved us many times because um, it's so easy to accidentally use stuff that we assume has been dragged in. Um, it's actually not that much of a risk for span stream, uh, just because I know this header's nature is going to drag in all IO streams. Um, it's more of a concern for more lightweight headers that might unintentionally need something in like utility, but it was only dragging in type traits or something. Um, and this is indeed a standard public header, so we should see changes to the three files here for standard library header units that I worked on. Um, so let's go check those. Yes, that's, so that is being updated here. Um, the test itself must import the new header. Ah, but it must use it. Importing is not sufficient. Uh, we also need to actually exercise this. Um, this test should also be updated to use the um, new header. Should be updated below. Um, a basic example of usage is all that's necessary. We're not trying to like exhaustively use literally every member function, which would take eons to compile and generate like a multi gigabyte executable. Um, this is just trying to just exercise a few templates, um, which catches a whole bunch of issues with the modules machinery, um, which is what we want here. This test should also be updated below to use the new header. A basic example usage is all that's necessary. This indicates a potential defect here. Um, this wiki should probably say um, test CPP should both import the library and, or import the header and do something minimal with it. Um, let's let's add that here just to avoid recurrences in the future. Um, here we go. Test CPP um, should both import the new header and then say um, should import the new header and then add a small example of usage below in sorted order. I think that should be sufficient because the, the test itself is very obviously structured in let's use algorithm, let's use bit set, let's use chrono um, in sorted order. Um, Can I suggest removing the parentheses? <laughs> uh, sorry, could you say that again? Suggest one Can I suggest removing the parentheses from the sentence ah, you've added? <laughs> that is a good idea because it this is, is perfectly valid as a non parenthetical. I'm, I have a tendency to overdo this. So yes, I noticed. Them. Okay, <laughs> that's an excellent suggestion. Thank you. Um, OK, so let's double check this. When adding standard public headers, add test coverage for standard library header units. Test CPP should import the new header 
and then add a small example of usage below in sort order. OK, um, whereas these others. And yeah, I was not disciplined about calling out multiple edits in a single file. All these other ones are just mentioned at once. Let me double check that. Mention once in CMake list. Uh, yeah, mention once in the sources. Mention once in the all public headers. This one already called out the separate sections for core and non-core. Um, mentioned once in header units JSON. Same with include each header alone. These mentioned once, but this is the only one that needs twice for the external or the public repo. OK, that's good. Great, thanks, Casey. Um, let's see, um, mention that. Let's get this path. I like having the, the change log for the wiki be comprehensible. Um, needs. Um, two edits. Updated. Prevent recurrences. Improve checklist. OK, um, so let's see here. We are importing in standard order. We've got the new comment about basic example of usage. OK, we've got the Python file used by the GitHub test harness. Should mention the new header span stream. Yes, in sorted order. We've got the internal Perl file used by the Ancient internal test harness, mentioning span stream assorted order. Good. OK, that was the public checklist. And then it's just internal stuff. This stuff is actually not too difficult, uh, except for this VS repo. And this, this was not difficult either. It's just we hardly ever change that stuff. So we got to ask somebody what the, the current process is always. Uh, OK, so that gets us through. All the little files have been edited. We're left with the uh, iOS forward and span stream, the new test. We can check the new test. This is adding new two, two new test directories. This has got the right number. I'm just visually checking. Yep, in sorted order. Yep. Um, let's make sure that names exactly match because typos here would not be detected until we actually try to mirror this internally. This is only used by the internal test harness. Um, yep, that looks good. Yep, that looks good. OK, uh, and there are relatively sorted, so that's good. Uh, new files. Uh, iOS forward, got our copyright license banner. This is using the usual matrix, so it's saying that it is good down to CS plus 14, uh, which is interesting. OK, it's got internally has 6x23 tests, so that's good. Um, so we can check off that end list. We'll look at this test in a bit. Uh, oh, wait, I saw this. I'll mention. Duplicate. Banner. Double the copyrights for double the fun. OK, um, this end list. Copyright license, usual latest matrix. So this is saying the usual compiler options because um, we have a whole bunch of permutations of them or combinations, um, but only for CS plus latest, which is correct for a CS plus 23 feature. So that's good. So look at this file real quick, see if we've got the duplicate banner. Um, of course, I want to look at the end, not the beginning. Um, where is it? There we go. Ah, we got more license duplication. Good duplication. Having a little fun with comments here. OK, um, so that's good. OK. Um, we got four decorations and eyes forward. Let's return to the paper now that we've checked the new header being added. OK. OK, so we've got the new header. We've got the um, checklist. Got the feature test macro and its corresponding tests because um, each section of wording should correspond to um, actual edits in the PR. So that's why I'm mentally going through. Um, then it adds new section in iOS forward. Uh, so it's adding four declarations of, and this is going to map. Uh, maybe I can even do a split here. Let's see if this will work. 
I want to see this on one side and this on the other. Yep. Okay. That actually works because these are kind of short. Um, here I'm again just looking at the proposal rather than the final voted wording, but I'm highly confident that this has not changed since this was voted in June. Um, plus, it's adding new code rather than adding, editing existing code. Um, the danger of churn and library working group issues is low. Um, so, if underscore has CXX23, and if here I'm checking that it's not if def, which is a common mistake. Um, we've got these declarations. These have been appropriately uglified to say underscore LM and underscore traits capitalized. We got class base expand buff, I span stream, O span stream, and span stream declarations. That's all good. Um, these occur after the basic st string stream, in between string stream and file buff. Here we can check that they are in sorted order. Um, let me go back to span stream, which is around 29. Because <clears throat> we have a convention um, following the standard order, unless there's a good reason not to. So string stream, span stream, and file buff. So that is being followed here. That's good. Okay. Um, there's no empty lines being added, but I think, yeah, we just spam out all the stuff without empty lines for these, so that's good. Primary streams. Um, next up, we got uh, the buffs. Um, if underscore is 6 is 23 end if matching. We got span buff, I span stream, O span stream, and span stream. Yep, that looks good. And then. We got the W versions, W span buff, W I span stream, W O span stream, and W span stream for the W KRTs. We've got some unsigned short abominations internally. Um, these are non standard and these should not exist in the public header. We've got a tracking issue for that. Um, there's no reason to add additional ones for the W stuff because this is all header only. These only exist because we've got some separately compiled tech. Um, so this should not be changed accordingly. So this is good. Um, it's always good to like look at context and ask, um, oh, you know, there's this other stuff being repeated here. Should this be also edited? Um, OK, so that looks good. IO stream or IOS forward looks good. Um, let's take the test, the new IOS, uh, the IOS forward test here. And we may have to. Um, Call this short because I see we're already an hour in, um, but hopefully we can get at least through some of the product code. So after the copyright banner, include iOS forward, look at stood, um, test forward declaration needs to be separately declared as a simple alias of stream pause. Oh, it's is it is because this is literally the same type, so you can't overload. That seems likely. Um, Let's check. Uh, what was it be working draft? Is it mentioned here? Using stream pause, using W stream pause. Why are these not the same? These are depicted as specializations. Oh, if the state type is the same, these will end up being the same. I bet you they're the same in our implementation. Um, let's check, see if I can load up the repo real quick. This is just the repo as of the time I last synced. It's not super new or this PR. Um, w stream pause. Yeah, they're literally the same type. Awesome. Um, F pause of our internal MB state T. So that's why you can't overload them. They're the same type. Um, so that's cool. Uh, yep. So he's overloading global versus test aliases. OK, agreed. Um, testing all the various types. Uh, I suppose we could audit against the paper real quick. Why not? I want the PR. I guess I reverse standard versus. No, oh, I want what? Oh, it's because I'm dragging the tab. There we go. OK. Uh, separate declared. Um, 
This is not exactly in standard order, but I guess it's okay. So it starts with stream pause and W stream pause. This is, it's not getting all the stream pauses. Okay, I'm a little confused about that. Um, I'll, I'll come back to that. Um, okay, so this starts off with, this looks like it's just testing the, oh, aliases, okay. So it starts by testing the type defs. Um, so these are just four declarations of the various class templates. Okay, here we go. So we should have an IOS and a YOS, a stream buff, an I stream, an O stream, and an IO stream. And then I assume this is probably following implementation order rather than standard declaration order because this switches to the W versions. OK, time to use the uh, technique that Mia taught me, which is to use the highlighter in Edge's PDF Previewer, which is extremely useful. Um, I want this to go away. OK, uh, we want IOS and YOS. We got stream buff. Where'd that go? Here it is. I stream, O stream, and IO stream. So let's follow standard order. Then we got W stream buff, Y stream, O stream, and YO stream. We've got string the buff, I string stream, O string stream, and string stream. We've got the W string buff versions. Y string, stream, O string, stream, W string, stream. Yep. Okay, we've got the newly added if has CXX23 span buff, I span stream, O span stream, and span stream. And then we've got the W span buff, Y span stream, O span stream, W span stream. Okay. And if comment underscore has 623, that's good. Uh, we've got the file buff, if stream, off stream, and f stream. Uh, the w file buff, w if stream, w off stream, and w f stream. Uh, for CXX20 only, if has 6620. We've got the sync buff and osync stream up here. And then the w sync buff and w osync stream. OK. Uh, these can be dropped. Um, so here, Misko, I see was just mirroring the header. This underscore CRT build macro um, is defined only when actually building the STL. It will never be defined by users and never be defined by the test harness. Um, and indeed, these things should not even exist in that or um, so um, this can slash should be deleted. Underscore CRT build is defined only when um, building the STLs separately. Compiled sources here, I'm being vague about whether it's the DL or the lib because it's both um, and is never defined for user test code. In fact, um, these aliases should not be present in the header at all. I can actually dig up that issue. We no longer need this issue, so I'll use this tab. Um, I would have said Ushio stream, I think. Nope. What is it? Oh, Ush I stream and Ush O stream. I O stream. Really, I could have sworn I filed an issue for this. Um, I probably said something like unsigned short type def. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, this sounds right. Um, yeah, here it is. When WKRT is a real type, user shouldn't see unsigned short machinery. Um, yeah, we got some weird stuff for ZC WKRT minus in here. I mentioned somewhere those type defs. Maybe I skipped over it already. But this, this is the issue that covers it. Did I even say 
Oosh, no, I should probably mention here in a follow up comment. Um, let's actually get that uh, quoted. I love citations that mention the actual code. Um, STL Inc. Uh, IS forward. So this is a link to our main. Yeah, that's so short. Let me expand this. Yeah. Um, so there's one way if you highlight the lines like this, try to remember. Oh, it's shift click. You can like right click and say copy permalink, or the way I usually do it is if you just hit Y, the keyboard shortcut will transform the main into the commit hash. Um, this is what GitHub will preview because this is a fixed commit and won't be invalidated as line numbers change. Um, so going back to this issue, um, I'll just add a comment. Um, this should also not appear in the header. Well, this is not as egregious because it is guarded by CRT build. Uh, apologies for the distraction, but I did want to record this. Um, there's really no reason for this to live in the header. Um, although this is guarded by underscore CRT build, um, ideally it shouldn't appear in the header at all. And hopefully in vnext, if we can drop zcwkrt minus, we can just eradicate all this nonsense someday. Though this is guarded by CRT built, ideally it shouldn't appear in the header at all. Yep. Okay, so comment recorded. Now I can cite this issue in my comment to Misco. Popping the stack here. Here we go. Um, whoop. Mentioned in number 216. Yeah. OK, uh, if the CRT build, this can should be deleted. Underscore CRT build is defined only when building the STL separately compiled sources and is never defined for user test code. In fact, these aliases should not be present in the header at all mentioned in 2.16. Damn. OK, great. Uh, goodbye. I was forward and that and uh, these two and this two. OK. Um, now let's look at this versus here. OK, and then. Yeah, he never tests. These others. OK, now I will add a comment about these because um, you've got tests of stream pause and W stream pause. But I'll ask about these others. Um, what about? Um, U8, stream pause, U16. I briefly considered whether copy pasting was faster here, but not on this um, laptop with my slow typing skills. Stream pause. Got to get that Oxford comma. OK, uh, what about U8 stream pause, U16 stream pause, and U32 stream pause? OK. So I will consider those covered here. So that leaves only these classes, class declarations. It's great that MISCO is adding test coverage for this, which was very curiously missing from um, our implementation. I think our TR1 legacy test harness was providing some coverage of this. Um, so this is verifying that template on care T it's fine for this to say care T, even though this says T, um, that we can form allocator. I actually, I did not know that I was forward mentioned allocator here. I mean, obviously it, it makes sense in retrospect, but if you asked me without looking at this, I would not have known that. Um, that we get the care traits. It also happens to declare specializations, but that can't really be sensed. So no reason for to test that or no way to test that. Um, and then I stream buffet iterator and O stream buffet iterator. 
these. Okay, here he's relying on the defaults. It seems reasonable to test. Can I form this just for the character type rather than, oh, can I also pass the traits? Um, yeah, I, I see no reason to try to test uh, customized traits here. I'm just making sure that the four decorations are present. Um, if the they were somehow declared without the traits, then trying to actually define it with the traits would not work. And I know we've got test coverage for custom traits elsewhere. Um, so we've got those two. Um, we've got the basic IO somewhere here. Uh, then we've got basic stream buff, I stream, O stream, and IO stream. Uh, we got the string buff, I string stream, O string stream, and string stream. All basic. Uh, if underscore 6623 end if matching comment. We got the basic span buff being added, I span stream, O span stream, and span stream. Yep. We've got the basic file buff. If stream, off stream, and F stream. And if underscore CXX20 end if, we've got the basic sync buff and basic O sync stream output only. Okay, that's this entire header. And technically, F pause has also been forward declared. It seems like that should also be also be tested to be comprehensive. Yeah. Um, where? Probably at the bottom. Yeah, because it's after everything else. Um, as a nitpick, this is a. Oh no, this is a struct. It's not a. Okay, I thought this is a function. I was going to be like, oh, there's an extra semicolon. Um, but it is indeed a struct. So semicolon struct. Um, we should. Um. Should this additionally test that? I want to switch away from highlighting now. There we go. Has been forward declared. Uh, should this addition test that template class date class F pause has been forward declared? I guess here the issue is that forming F pause of care T is kind of squirrely and squirrelier than um, allocator. Yeah. Um, possibly uh, with a type named differently than care T to avoid confusion. I guess maybe he's concerned about forming the type F pause of something that's not actually legitimate. You know, I think this is overkill. I think we I think we got the the type defs. This is fine. Um, let's just avoid that. Uh, OK. So he's forming. Or instantiating. The test alias is struct which will then instantiate all the declarations of its member functions or static member functions, even though they're not actually defined anywhere. So make a test aliases object, test for declarations of care and for declarations of WCARE-T. That all seems good. Um, this is a compile only test. There is no actual runtime functionality happening here. It occurs to me that we could call this a test compile whatever pass.cpp because um, we don't actually need this main to execute. Uh, this convention was added after my joining the library team, so I never remember exactly how it works. I need to go look it up real quick. Um, was it test.compile? Yeah, pass.cpp. And then do we say like compile only somewhere in it? Yeah, yeah, we do. OK, so why don't we get um, both of these? Uh, or even better, um, quote this. So that was the putter cat test. Yeah, let's do that. Let's use quoting technology. 
Okay. Uh, Tess. Come on. Stood. Tess. Despite the name, Pooter Cat uh, does not involve any actual cats. I am disappointed. It's categories. Get the permalink by hitting Y. Uh, get this here. Okay, we're ready. Uh, I'll just comment on all I mean, I guess. Um, uh, this um, isn't uh, executing any um, code at runtime, um, so I believe that the test should be named uh, test compile pass CPP. Um, we should have another function instantiating um, these classes and then main should be empty with the conventional compile only comment. Okay, let's see if that looks right. Uh, this isn't executing any code at runtime, so I believe that the test should be named test compile pass CPP. We should have another function instantiating these classes, and then main should be empty with the conventional compile only comment. In main compile only. Okay. I think um, our internal test runner doesn't care about the difference, but the GitHub test runner, I believe, knows when it sees test compile pass CPP, did not even bother executing um, the exe just to make sure that it can be generated, which saves us some time. Um, and that, that's driven off the name, not the comment. The comment is a just useful reminder for the humans. OK, uh, so that test is reviewed. This is a highlighting good. Yep, thanks again, Mia, for that cool trick. Uh, now, let's see, we got about 15 minutes. Let's uh, take a look at the bit of the product code and a bit of the standard ease. OK, let's look at the, let's go back to the paper a bit. And just see an overview of what's going on. Um, I'll have to get to the product code in a later review, but this is a good start. OK, and there's also some a few notes, although as uh, the committee members are fond of saying, the standard is not a tutorial. Um, the, the notes sometimes provide a little bit of help on how to use stuff or what the meaning of stuff is. Um, OK, so span.streams, this section introduces a stream interface for user provided fixed size buffers. Um, the header span stream defines class templates and types that associate stream buffers with objects whose types are specializations of span, as described in views.span. A user of these classes, and this I am almost certain has been editorially corrected. Um, actually, we, we can check. Let's see if we can get a whole um, editorial issue out of this too. Where's that working draft? Come on, here we go. Um, that's span.streams, which is not here. Let's see if I can find it. Span based streams. Ooh, a user of these is classes. Ah, we get to file a um, editorial issue. I won't do that online here. Um, I will either do it offline or I will get um, someone to do that. OK, um, is responsible for ensuring that the character sequence represented by the given span outlives the use of the sequence by objects to classes in this subclause. Using multiple basic span buff objects referring to overlapping underlying sequences where at least for multiple threads, where at least one basic span buff objects used for writing the sequence results in a data race. OK, so this is telling implementers you don't need to care about lifetime. The user will manage the lifetime for you. You don't need to care about somehow synchronizing writes to the buffer. Because if the user tries to get multiple threads to scribble in the same buffer, that's just a data race, no special locking required, um, which is good. It means that we don't need to worry about locking when reviewing all this stuff the same uh, the way that we did when we reviewed uh, SyncStream, whose entire purpose of life was multi-threading. Um, so this then presents span stream synopsis. The header, or the standard has a somewhat curious way of depicting machinery. It talks about the header. It will show declarations of the classes. And this is just to give you an idea of what's declaring. But 
Here, this is not actually just a forward declaration of basic span buff. This will provide the definition of it too. Um, so if we scroll down, we'll see, oh, basic span, basic span buff's whole definition is provided unlike IOS forward. Um, so then this provides the two type defs. Um, same with I span stream, O span stream, and span stream. Okay, so it's the buffer and then the three streams, and that's it. Okay, so here's that promise definition. We get the basic span buff. It's got a bunch of constructors that then initialize the base class, or sorry, this is a delegating constructor. CS plus 11 feature delegates to in pipe out. Got an explicit constructor, constructor taking span. So interestingly, this drags in span, um, but is not required to actually provide it. Um, and iOS forward does not need to forward declare it. Um, okay. There's also, and I think there was um, some comments on the PR from our contributors about because there's a span member function, um, this the standard ease is careful to qualify std span just to avoid ambiguity um, for humans, if nothing else, and the implementation can do so as well. Um, this occurs in a few other places. Um, reverse iterator is one where there's a reverse iterator um, class in the standard, and there's also reverse iterator type defs in the containers. Um, so if you just see a plain reverse iterator, it can be visually ambiguous. Uh, do you mean the class template? Do you mean the type def? Um, the standard has a particular rule that makes it unambiguous sometimes, but it's easier just to qualify the standard ones when that's what you mean. Um, okay, so then we've got uh, overridden virtual functions. There is a PR out to mention only override and not virtual when you've got an overrider. We should check real quick to see if this is following that. That's one of the fun bits about having 60 PRs active at the same time. Um, this does repeat virtual override, uh, so we should mention the stealth merge conflict. Um, let's go find that PR. Uh, just copy 2069. Uh, we've we in our last maintainer meeting we decided to go ahead with this. Um, uh, change to our conventions um, and to accept this um, PR, um, although we still need to actually review the edits that it's making, um, which was not the case when um, Misco filed this earlier, 2029. So we will call out this uh, future merge conflict. Is this the first mention override? There are three in this file. One, two, three. Okay. To avoid a um, stealth merge, it's a quasi conflict because it would be fine to actually ship this, except for inconsistency um, with 2069. Um, the three, I like the digit here, occurrences of virtual override in this header should be preemptively changed to just override. OK, to avoid a stealth merge quasi conflict with 2069, remove redundant uses of virtual keyword, the three occurrences of virtual dot override in this header should be preemptively changed to just override rather than checking it in like this and then noticing we let some more virtuals get in and then fixing them up. Um, let's just get it right the first time. Um, OK. Uh, oh, going back to the um, paper, I think it was when I noticed the overrides. Yep, that activated the neurons in my brain saying, wait, didn't we get a PR about overrides? Um, okay, seek off, seek policy. Yep, there's only three. We got some expedition only members. It actually just stores a span as buff. Got a non member swap. The class templates derived from basic stream buff to associate possibly the input sequence and possibly the output sequence with a sequence of arbitrary characters. Um, the maintain is provide maintain data is provided here as so exposition only is how the um, uh, standard reconciles the issue of we need to specify how the stuff works without actually just providing a reference implementation with it's really quite convenient in some cases to depict code as if it's initializing a data member. Um, so that's what the standard means when it says exposition. Uh, sorry, exposition only. It means okay. I am going to specify this stuff in terms of 
a data member named just mode or buff, but this stuff is private. Um, it is not actually meant to be available for users. Um, and something, an implementation is certainly not required to provide it by this name. It's expected to at least be uglified um, and may achieve it through other means entirely. So if an implementation wanted to, straw, uh, wanted to store just separate start and end pointers rather than actual span object, it would be allowed to do so as long as the observable effects are equivalent as if the exposition only member were followed naively. Um, in practice, unless there's some optimization or convenience to be had, we usually just implement the stuff as depicted, just uglifying it, because um, that usually is the most natural way. Usually you see exposition only when something is so simple um, that just showing a data member being initialized does the right thing, or sometimes when like conversions are needed and the standard is already, already specified this internal machinery. Um, so that's what exposition only means. I guess we can look through the constructors real quick and then um, call this a review. Um, so the constructors are going to take the span, initialize the base class with, or default initialize the base class, store the mode, and then store the internal pointers as if calling the span member function, which will go do work. Uh, the move constructor will move the base class, move the mode. It's just a, this is unnecessary, isn't it? Yeah, IO space open mode is like an enum. There's no real reason to move it, but it, it doesn't hurt anything. Um, same with the buff, like moving a, moving a span does nothing. Um, it doesn't benefit from move, but it's simpler to just always depict move. So that's why the standard showing that. Um, then it updates these sequence pointers that I've never really understood in IO streams. Um, it's implementation to find whether the ride is empty after the move. And these are the post conditions. OK, so the usual stream stuff, and then it's got some more specific uh, member functions. So that will be entertaining when I go and review the rest of this PR's code and tests. So how far do we get here? Let's uh, let's see. Uh, we got all the files except for span stream and the tests. So that's pretty good. And we understand now after reading the paper, the purpose and intent of span stream and its relationship to the existing string stream and stir stream um, and some of its usage. Um, the examples in the, the standard were quite useful. Um, so I'll go ahead and um, submit this review. Um, I'll say this is request changes because I did find some issues. Um, um, partial uh, review to be um, available as a video recording in the near future. Um, uh, I looked at everything except um, span, or I'll say the file path, STL inc span stream and the PO448R4 span stream. I get real nervous when I type something out rather than copy pasting it. Um, uh, CP, of course I leave you know the hard stuff for the end, but that's how I always work. Um, partial review to be available as a video recording in the near future. I looked at everything except for span stream and span stream test CP. Okay, that's just a helpful reminder. GitHub does save the viewed state, but I always like to mention that for my own note. Um, okay, so we got we got some good comments there. Um, got some idea of how to review a paper. Um, hopefully this was useful. Um, does anyone have any questions? I don't think there were any questions, but Casey has gone and done various things for you, as you mentioned. I'll have to go do that later. So ah, Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Casey. Yep, uh, okay. value. <laughs> Yay, value added. Editorial <laughs> issues filed. Extremely useful. Improving the standard and improving our uh, backlog of issues to improve, like the um, uh, USHIO type defs that really shouldn't be there. Uh, okay, well, I think then that does it. Uh, thank you for watching this video code review slash uh, how to read a standard proposal. All right, great. Thanks so much.